What's going on guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the process that I go through to perfect skin tone individual result. If you like these type of videos, which is going to be like a walkthrough slash tutorial, let me know in the comments below and I'll make more of them. Equally, if you don't like it, also let me know. But let's get started. So the first thing I do with all of my color grays is use the color space transform tool. If you don't know what this is or why it's important, then click the link in the description. I'll probably have a video talking about it. But I'm going to do a quick just a very quick base grade so we can get to the point where we can start to adjust the skin tones. Okay, here seems good. So what I do to get perfect skin tones is I use secondary corrections. Now secondary corrections are essentially corrections which isolate part of an image when you're correcting an image or color grading. So my secondary correction of choice that I use is called the qualifier, which is this tool here. So click onto that and then click onto an area of the skin tone. Right now you can see that it's done absolutely nothing, but the fact is it has done something, you just can't physically see it. If you look over to the nodes tab right here, you can actually see that it's done something, but you're not really seeing it. To view what it's actually done, you need to click the highlight tool, which is this tool here. As you can see, it's kind of like, it's kind of done a key around his face. And this is perfect, this is what the qualifier does. It selects a color and isolates it. So now what we're going to do is use the qualified tools down here to try and get the cleanest selection of his face possible. So I'm going to go to the hue here. I'm going to see if I adjust it, if it's going to help the image. Yep, it helps it a little bit. If I move it, it's going to help. That seems to be okay. Uh, adjust the softness. Nope, that's not going to help. Saturation. I'm going to adjust L soft. That seems to do what I need it to do is helping out a lot. Adjust the lows, see if it's going to help. A little bit, adjust the highs. Yep, seems to be good. Now the luminance, this will probably be one of the most effective for this specific image. L soft, no. Nope. High soft. So I'm just adjusting each of these tools. Again, the longer you spend on this, the greater it's going to be. Now at the side here, going to denoise the image a little bit. I'm going to clean the blacks, which is doing perfectly what I needed to do. Clean the whites, increase the blur radius up a little bit. Now you see these tools here, you can actually use these to, you know, include more of a color or subtract more of a color. But I like to use this feather one here because it, it does it very subtly. Now, for now, this seems to be okay. Um, with the qualifier tool, it could be a lot better, but for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it there. Now, essentially, what we'll then do is do whatever corrections you want towards the image. So, if you wanted to go to the curves here and then go to hue versus hue, you could then select the skin tones and adjust it that way. Me personally, I don't like to do it that way. Also, you might be wondering, well, where's the rest of the image gone? To see the rest of the image, click the highlight tool again. And this gives you a better overall you know, vision of what the final image is going to look like with the corrections as you're doing it in real time. So for me personally, I like to use the color wheels. So I'm going to just move around. Let me be extreme so you can see that it's affecting the image. But I'm going to subtly just move it in the direction I think might work best for this image. And I think this seems to be okay. I'm going to increase the gain a little bit, brighten his face up a tad. And again, just adjust it. Now, I'll show you the before, after, before, after. I might decrease the saturation just slightly. That seems to be quite okay. Now I'm going to quickly throw in one of my LUTs from my uh, pack. Yeah, it seems to be okay. But as you can see, the skin tones have been... <laughs> messed up again so we're going to go back to this specific node and we can adjust the skin tones much more and put it more towards the grade in which you think will work better and i think that seems to be okay now you might be saying yeah that's great and all but there isn't really much going around what if the skin tone is similar to other things in the environment okay fair enough i'm going to do another quick base grade on this and then we're going to correct the skin tones but as we're doing this, um, you might be wondering, 
do you correct the skin tones before or after you grade the image and it the answer really is it normally depends if you're for example shooting say for example during this shoot if somebody was walking by with a green t-shirt you would start to see those reflections on the surface of the skin color skin poisoning and if that was the case i'd color correct and adjust the skin tones beforehand using secondary corrections like the qualifier um, and then i'll do after the grid just so that i have a perfect base to work from because those sort of things you don't really want to be messing with um, after you've graded the image because you realize that you've messed up and you need to go all the way back okay so uh this is okay for now okay so here we're gonna hit the qualifier tool go down to here hit this button make sure this is selected then we're going to click onto the face next hit highlight and bam we can see that this is selected right now it's got quite a lot in so i'm going to see if i can narrow down the selection just a little bit we're missing part of his forehead here so we're going to hit this feather tool here and see if we can just bring it in ever so slightly <laughs> Okay, this is super crazy, but we're going to go with it. Now I'm going to adjust the parameters in the qualifier. See if we can clean this up a little bit. Low soft. Nope. High soft. Yep. Denies the image. Absolutely. Cleaner black. Absolutely. That's helping a little bit. Cleaner whites. It's helping a bit. Blur radius increased that. In and out ratio. Okay. Again, we can spend a lot of time perfecting this, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna make do with that. Hit the highlight tool off and start adjusting the image. So again, to show you it works, I can adjust the skin tone. You see, if it does this, as you can see, it's selected also round. We're not just selecting the skin tone. So what we can do is if you really wanted to, I'm making it purple so you can see. You can go to the power window here, select only the part of the image you want to be affected. This will be another great way to isolate just the parts that you want. But again, we'll go into that in the next example. But yeah, let's take, let's take <laughs> the purple off and adjust the skin tones correctly. So as you can see, I'm adjusting the skin tones, but the outside is not being affected, which is great. For me, that looks pretty good. Before, after, before, after, I might increase the brightness a little bit. Turn the saturation down. Up a little bit. Seems to be great that we could throw in a lot from my pack if I wanted to. And if it looks a bit too much, we can go back in and we can adjust the skin once more to make it fit the scene. Perfect. The next example, the other secondary correction I use are power windows and tracking. So if you navigate to the window tab, the power window tab, you could either click this tool to draw around that face. But again, for the sake of time, we're not going to do that. I'm going to click the circle tool and I'm just going to select around her face roughly because again, we can adjust this afterwards, right? Adjust the feathering a bit. Cool. Now navigate to the tracker tab, which is right here and click this tool to track forward. And it's essentially going to track the whole face. If your subject's moving, it will track the face, which is pretty cool. It does it in real time. Now with this, if we hit the highlight tool, we can see that it's got the face selected. But it's got a bit of the hair as well. So to get back to the menu, click this icon here, go to power window and adjust the parameters ever so slightly. So it fits just the part of the face you're working with. You see why this would have been easier if we drew around the face, but again, we'll make do with what we have. This seems to be okay. And I'm gonna hit the highlight tool off and I'm gonna go down to here and click off as well so we don't see the power window. Now I'm gonna start to adjust the image. And as you can see, if you go to a face, we're adjusting our skin tones and it looks okay actually so i'm going to adjust it ever so slightly i'm going to brighten up a little bit and before after before 
after again you can be very precise with this you can you know go as crazy as you want and then afterwards let me go to my LUT pack I can throw on a quick LUT I can go back in and correct the face again if I wanted to if it looks a bit too much there we go before after could desaturate a little bit that's much more natural again this is the process that I go through to correct my skin tones and perfect them as much as I can if you like this style of video, then let me know in the comments below. Peace.